Good morning and welcome to our homestead. As you can see, we're finally putting up our solar panels for our chicken coop barn solar project. Today we're gonna to be installing this DIY roof mount kit from Signature Solar, and then we are gonna be wiring the panels. This will be our first video on installing the Victron system, which is highly customizable for the barn. If you haven't seen the video where we introduced what parts and pieces we are using, click on this one at the top of the screen. Now let's get more panels on the roof before it's 100 degrees out here. So here we go, this is a mini rail kit from Signature Solar and you can place these in a lot of different positions, which is what's really nice about it. The only stipulation is that you keep the end panel clamp a half inch in from the edge of your end uh, mini rail here. These are the 455 watt Solar Ever panels. They're 82 inches long and 41 and 7 eighths inches wide. So with those dimensions, you're not going to hit a roof rafter every single time. On the edge, I started off on the lookout rafter and then as I've come in, I hit a rafter here. I'm not sure how many more I'll hit on the way down. That's just the way it is. Now you can go to the underside of the sheathing and try to block out for where you anticipate your next rail is going to be. That's up to you. And it's a good idea to lay out everything with a chalk line to begin with so everything stays aligned and straight. Once you've got things marked out, you're going to attach your mini rail to your bracket. On the top of the bracket, you can see it's got four holes, so you can attach the rail in either configuration. For us, we are going to be clamping on the sides of our panels because they are too long for our roof and hang over the edge. So we're gonna go with this configuration here. Use the supply bolt and washers and just connect it together. Now, when you put these panel clamps in here, Depending on where your panel falls, if you're a little bit off with this rail, it's okay because you can adjust it either way. Just make sure, like I said on that end one, it doesn't go past a half inch on that end. And when you do this, you're going to need this grounding clip right here. So that fits around the bottom of this and these little burrs on it, I guess you could say, dig into the anodization on the panels. So it does make contact with the actual metal on the panels connecting everything together. And when you're doing the grounding for this, everything on the roof has to be one cohesive unit. So that's what these clips are doing. They're digging through the paint and the anodization on the panels. So if you don't wanna ground the rails, you can use this type of grounding clamp. This, is, this holds the grounding wire right here and this attaches to the panel. And you can put that on each panel. And it also has one of these little bird plates right here, which cuts through that coating on the outside and connects everything together. But remember, you'll also need this clip right here to tie in your panels to your grounding mount and rail. Now let's mount this flashing plate. So let's show you how the flashing and the bracket connect together. So this flashing itself has this embossed piece right here and that's to help divert water around where your bracket is going to connect. Right here, the holes for the bracket are elevated so when you put this on it's going to fit perfectly over and it's not going to move around and hopefully that'll also help divert water around the holes where your uh, screws your lag screws are going to go through and then additionally on the bottom of the bracket is has this neoprene piece and that will help with water tightness on this portion so it'll connect on like that and then your lag screws will go through and hopefully hit a roof rafter and if not that's all right and on the lag screws, of course, they have a neoprene washer, and that will also help prevent um, water infiltration in there. If you want, you can put some sealant on this portion right here on the bottom. I didn't think that was necessary. It's almost completely covered by the panel, so it should be all right. So by far the most challenging portion of this is prying up your shingles. These are brand new shingles. You just saw me build this shed a couple of months ago, and if you didn't see those videos, click on the link at the top of the screen. But prying these up off of their ceiling strip here, the tar ceiling strip, is a challenge. So depending on where yours sits and how many rows you put it under, you may have to pry up two rows and get a random roofing nail out of the way. I've just got a simple putty knife to do this because it's nice and thin, but this one is a stiff knife. So that's the best tool I've found to do it. This is by far the longest part of the process. If you do encounter a nail, you're probably going to need a pry bar to gently 
get that up without poking through or ripping your shingle underneath. Just slide your flashing underneath the appropriate amount of shingles and in the position that you pre-measured. You can drive that nail back in the same spot and through your flashing to hold it down even more securely. And then hopefully as soon as that sun hits it and we have these in, that tar strip will re-adhere itself. Okay, we're gonna fit on our rail and bracket assembly. Like I said, it's just gonna fit over the top and it's not gonna move sideways because those holes are lipped up. And then I'm just gonna drive it home with our lag screw. Now let me get the top one done and then I'll show you how we put the panel on. Now make sure before you get your panels on the roof, it's configured in the correct way. So these three panels over here, I'm running in series. And then the other three panels over there, I'm running in series. And then they're gonna be paralleled together. So I've got my positive on this side, the positive wire and the negative wire. So you wanna make sure that those are oriented properly when you put them up, because taking them down again is not fun. So if you are doing this by yourself, there are gonna be a few challenges. And one of those challenges I found is getting the panel up and stable and then being able to clamp it down with the clamps. So this one right here is tight on this panel already. The one at the top is not. It has tension on the other side of the panel with the two other clips. But what I'm gonna to have to do so I can slide this up and get it over those little burrs on that grounding clip is undo it and I'm gonna stick a little piece of duct tape under it and then tape it to the panel. So what that's gonna do for me is give me just enough height to slide the panel over the top of the ground, grounding clip and underneath and inside the clamp. And that's how it looks and I've got a little bit more room in between here so I can slide that panel in. And then I'll reach from the bottom and tighten it up. I'm gonna rest it on the rails and slide it up from underneath. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge. But it can be done. The panel is not sliding because those rails are grooved. And I'm gonna clamp this down. Now I will head up, connect the existing one at the top, and then put the other two on this side. Now that we have all of our panels up, we can start wiring them together and doing all of our wire management underneath. And like I said, ours are wired in series parallel to keep the voltage, amperage, and wattage correct for our system. We have three in series over here, three in series over there, and then those two strings will be paralleled together. So when you're wiring in series, the positive and negative from each panel is connected together. And that makes it easy on these panels. They all have MC4 connectors on them. You just click them together. Then we will use some wire management clips and make these nice and tucked in the way they should be. So in this small of a system, you don't need a combiner box. If you want to use that, you can, but the splitters work just fine. These are our two positive conductors for our two series strings. They go into this branch connector, and then this conductor will go into one of our MPPT charge controllers. Here's the branch connector for the negative conductors, and I do need to run a jump wire from the other side of the roof where the other panels are over to here. Then we can run this combined end into the negative side of our MPPT. Welcome inside the portion of the shed, which is for our solar equipment. This is the wall over here where we are gonna be mounting all of our new Victron equipment. We've got an insulated and an air conditioner installed just in case because it's about 105 degrees outside right now. The nice thing is, is that air conditioner will be running directly off this solar, keeping itself cool. Make sure you stick around for the entire series of videos. And if you're interested in any of this equipment, I have a link to Signature Solar in the description below. Now, if you are interested in our EG4 or GrowWatt installation videos, click on this series up here. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.